All right, get our Bibles out if you would. We're going to go to the book of uh, Matthew and chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 28. Matthew 6, 28. These are the words of uh, Jesus, of course. It says, And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil uh, thereof. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, growing, uh, growth and, and growing and those sorts of uh, things. Um, you may have noticed uh, that there's not a lot of growing going on in gardens uh, at the moment in fact quite the quite the opposite uh, everything that uh, was growing has stopped and uh, most uh, things a lot of uh, things flowering things for example have uh, frozen and are dead uh, at the moment um, and so what's happening there's there's cold but the big thing that happens is that there's darkness and um, in darkness, things don't grow. Uh, you look at the plants around about and, and you see. So we've got much shorter days right now. Uh, the sun gets up later. Um, by five o'clock, it's pretty much dark. And so they're not getting what they need to, uh, to grow. But we know that won't be very long uh, and the growth will start again and that there's going to be light coming. Um, we'll get to, you know, March or whatever, and, and the days will be getting uh, longer. And you start to see leaves on the trees and all of those things, and spring comes, and we all know what it, um, it looks like. And, and it really looks um, that they don't seem to do a lot. Like, what are they going to do? They're planted in the ground, right? Um, it seems as though that growth mechanism is uh, started automatically by an external force that's not in the tree or the plant. Um, something else is is happening um, that that the, the tree is not in in control of. So, a little science lesson: there is a protein. Uh, and that protein's name is constans, C-O-N-S-T-A-N-S, -N -N a constans protein in uh, plants. And what it does is it, dete it detects how long the night is. It's figuring out in some way, God, <laughs> God knows, he did it, uh, how long is the, is the night. And as that time period gets shorter, less darkness and more light coming uh, this uh, protein activates and uh, the tree thinks oh i think i'll grow now i think i'll get some leaves and uh, i'll mark, put a bit of growth on my branches and i'm going to get buds and i'm going to get flowers and i'm going to get pollinated and all of those good things but the growth only happens when there's enough light when there's enough heat um, when those two things are right the tree detects it and off they go and they they start to grow they know that there's light and so they grow in the light and i'm sure you can see where i'm going with that um, they actually uh, grow uh, towards the light some are more obvious than others but generally speaking 
plants and trees, what have you, uh, know where the light is coming from, and that's the direction uh, that they grow in. Um, and so in our house, you may have noticed it's a little little plastic greenhousey thing. It's right up against the window. And, uh, and uh, we didn't quite know exactly what we were doing, but uh, put some seeds into little trays and Sage and Irie helped with all, all of that. Put them in there right next to it. And up they come and you think, oh, that's good. In no time at all, they're doing this, leaning over towards the window. They're leaning over towards, um, uh, towards the light. Uh, I seem to figure it out, you actually, once they germinate, you should take them outside. Um, but anyway, that's a different thing. And so even mature plants will grow towards the light, the strongest light. And um, how do they how do they do it? How do they how do they manage this? Well, what they do is um, they elongate the cells on the stem on the side that is away from the light. And so if the light is over there, then the cells on this side get bigger, and the ones on this side don't get bigger, and it drives the plant over towards um, uh, the light. That's how they do it. Um, it's actually called phototropism. Um, that's what they called it, uh, light-oriented growth. And there is a substance responsible for it called uh, uh, oxin, A-U-X-I-N. It's called uh, oxin, um, some substance God put in the cell so that it would know where, where is the light. I'm going to grow that way, and that's, and that's how uh, it does it. Now, if you look in Matthew chapter 6 again, Jesus said, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. The word grow there in the Greek is oxano, which is obviously where they, uh, how they named this particular uh, um, substance called oxin. It comes from this, and the word means uh, to grow, obviously, uh, but it also means to give an increase. Consider the lilies of the field, how they give an increase, how they are more than they were before. And um, so perhaps, uh, and this is just me saying this, where, where, they, where he said, consider how they grow, maybe, maybe it's just as much, consider what they grow towards. What are they growing towards? Yes, they're growing, but what is it that they're sort of tending um, towards? And it's, and it's the light. Plants know uh, that in order to grow well, they need light. Now, they don't know things as we know things, but it's inbuilt uh, to them that they look for that light and they will, they will find it. If there's any chance of finding light, they will grow until they, um, until they find it. And so this, this oxen, A-U-X-I-N, is something that we have, not in the same way that they do. Our oxen is called the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. What does it do? What does the Holy Ghost do? Well, it draws us to God's light. It tells us the way that we need to grow. It makes us to feel comfortable in the light and not in darkness as we were uh, before. It leads us to his word and an understanding of it. Uh, his principles, of course, um, his love towards us, the grace and mercy that he bestowed uh, 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 on us, all of those things. There's a whole range of things that we know and understand because we've got something inbuilt in us that says, go to the light. That's where you need, that's where you need to be. Um, they do it because it's just there and off they go. Um, we do it because the Lord has put something in us, something different, something way more powerful than oxen, of course, but the Holy Ghost is our oxen. It's what get, gets us to, to grow. What are we going to grow uh, towards? So that's sort of the, uh, the thought there. If you want to go to uh, Hebrews and chapter 10, if you go with me there. Hebrews and chapter 10. And <clears throat> verse 19. Uh, 
Hebrews 10, verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Let us consider one another to provoke, to love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day uh, approaching. And so um, we obviously want to grow towards that light, but there's only, uh, there's only one way. If you had a plant that had uh, no oxen, A-U-X-I-N, uh, in it, then it wouldn't matter what it did. It, it couldn't, it couldn't uh, grow towards the light. There would be nothing that would be able to change it and mould it and move it in the direction um, that, the light, that the light was. And so how can we, anybody, um, how can we hope to draw near to the Lord? How can we hope to grow in his ways? How can we hope to be uh, uh, drawn to him and his, uh, and his light and his principles if we don't have the Holy Spirit um, uh, uh, in our life there? He says to hold fast, hang on to it with every fibre of your being, um, our, uh, our faith, without wavering. Why? because he's faithful. He has made promises to his children and uh, we can rely upon those. We've all experienced them. We've all seen other people experience them. And we know that uh, uh, what the Lord declares is, uh, is faithful and true. He's not, gonna, he's not gonna go back on his word. He's not gonna be sneaky. He's not gonna be sort of, ah, oh, tricked you there. Never happen. He's always going to be 100% um, faithful in everything uh, uh, that he does. In, um, don't turn to this, I'll just quote it. In 1 John, it says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shines. And we might have been in a life where there was a lot of darkness. Some people um, sort of grow up in, in circumstances, uh, uh, bad circumstances, don't they? And uh, all they know is, is darkness. Um, the world generally, of course, is in darkness as far as the things of God are concerned. Um, but he finishes that off with, and the true light now uh, shines. But it's not enough, is it, um, to just lean towards the light. If you're a plant and you see the light, it's not just a matter of going like that and, the, and that's it, you stop. Um, what does it do? What does a, what does a plant do that's, that's doing all that stuff? Well... Um, one thing it does is it keeps growing. Uh, while there's light, uh, it keeps growing. And uh, it, you know, it doesn't stop. Yes, it needs water. Yes, it needs food and all that kind of stuff. But it, it will grow in those circumstances. And it, it develops. And ultimately, um, it produces fruit, whatever that fruit uh, might be, um, that can be uh, good for other things the fruit is there to you know for the pollination of the plant and sort of um, uh, getting seeds out and all that kind of and all that kind of thing but the fruit is also good for whatever comes to it to eat it to sustain others the fruit is there not only to sustain the plant but to sustain other um, others and so our fruit what is it going to do well yes it's good for us and it's it's uh, um, you know, it makes us strong and, and all those things. But 
that fruit is also good for others via testimony, uh, via uh, people seeing the things that perhaps we're going through and, and the Lord is, uh, uh, is helping us with, you know. And so not to be uh, complacent, uh, but continue to grow and continue to uh, uh, produce right right to the end, whenever that end is, that we continue uh, in, that, uh, in that way. Um, talked about uh, uh, holding fast the profession of our, of our faith. Well, the, the growing process in the Lord is, is enhanced, no doubt is enhanced, by being around others who are growing as well. And uh, if you're with others who are growing as well, you'll find that that you're going to be growing. You're going to be feeding off the things that they're feeding off and vice versa. You'll help them, they'll help you. So that's why he says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. It is important. It's not important. It's critical. It's crucial in everything in your walk in the Lord to be with people of like, uh, of like mind there. Um, have you ever seen a field of sunflowers and uh, there might be thousands of them in a, in a field and they've all turned to face the sun. They're all doing it all day to face wherever, uh, wherever the sun uh, is. They move in whatever direction that, um, that, the, sun, that the sun is. And, and that's what we've got to be like. Wherever the S-O-N is, wherever that light is, that's the direction that we want to be in um, as well. And so the assembling, the, the exhorting, as it says there, exhorting one another, uh, all of those things, they, they allow us in the Lord to grow together, to have a shared sense of, of urgency, to have a shared sense of, of, of blessing. And, uh, you know, we pray for each other and all of, those, all of those good things. Why? Because we're exhorting one another. And what does he say? And so much the more as you see the day approaching and we all know that as we look out there and we read it uh i was going to say the newspaper but i don't know what you say anymore but as you read the news um you you know that the day is approaching and it's closer now than it has ever been uh, at, at any time in history uh today is the day that we need to be looking at more and more and more and have more sense of urgency than we did yesterday and if the lord tarries Tomorrow, we'll do it uh, all over again. In John 8, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, in Acts 26, Paul was talking to King Agrippa, and he said to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, to have a revelation, to have something that the Lord puts inside of us, and we go, aha, I know now. I understand now. Uh, before I came to the Lord, you all know, uh, never read a Bible at all, didn't know anything about it whatsoever. Um, not one single fact could I have told you. Um, and so it was, to me, it was just complete darkness. It was as dark as you could possibly get. And it was a bit like what Rebecca said in her testimony, that a light switch, when I received the Holy Spirit, a light switch came on and I started reading things and thinking, I think I know what that means. And I've never had that before. Um, and so uh, the Lord reveals himself to us, his plan, his purpose, the direction that we need uh, uh, to go in. What does he say there? Uh, you have the light of life. And Paul said to turn them from darkness to light. Um, and the light got turned on and the switch was flicked. And we thought, aha, it's an aha moment. Um, and lots of people had it in the Bible. Paul had it. They all did when they received that spirit, that aha uh, moment. And our spiritual eyes are opened. And we start to focus on different things. Um, I used to be a drinker as well. And um, the time uh, came, I, I received the Holy Spirit. And um, uh, after that, just never ever thought about it again wasn't sort of think oh my goodness how am i going to give this up i honestly never ever thought about it uh, ever again 
And that's not anything that I did. That's something that the Lord did. And, and I'm sure we've all had our own um, experiences like, uh, like that. Now, if you go back to chapter 5, still in Hebrews now, chapter 5, and verse 12, Hebrews 5, verse 12, says, for when, uh, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even though who, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good uh, and evil. And so, of course, um, it's not enough that a plant gets uh, uh, light and heat. Uh, you've got to have them, but it's not, it's not enough. Uh, they need food. Um, nutrients as it were and um and water and uh i mean you all know about you know photosynthesis and all that all that uh, uh, all that sort of thing um it basically transfers uh light energy and it creates uh what well, takes in co2 takes in water the light comes and it turns it into um oxygen and uh and sugars typically so food um and so it's producing this food and it's producing a life-giving substance which is uh, oxygen and so it's taking something that's poisonous to us co2 get yourself a, uh, put yourself in a room that's only got co2 in it see how long you last it will not be very long um so it's taking something that's poisonous carbon dioxide co2 and it combines it with two things water and light and it produces food and oxygen two things absolutely essential for um for for life to to grow and 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 to thrive in a natural in a natural uh, sense and so the more growing they do the less poisonous gas there is and the more food and oxygen is um, is produced, and we do something kind of similar. We take something that's poisonous to our eternal future, uh, our love of the world, perhaps our love of our natural life, the things that we're involved in, the things that we believe, the things that we're obedient to, the idols that we uh, that we worship, even if we don't think we're worshiping, we worshiping them uh, we are so we take those poisonous things of our natural life and we combine them with a living water <laughs> um, the spirit described by jesus christ as a well of living water and uh, so we combine it with the water and with the light of the world which is jesus christ in our life the holy spirit uh, in our life and so we we uh, we get this poisonous thing and we convert it into um, something that's good. Uh, when the plant does it, it produces life. When the Holy Ghost does it, it produces life eternal by taking something that's not good for us and combining it with the living water and the light of the world, and it produces this life everlasting um, the bigger the tree is the more poisonous gas it takes out of the air the more oxygen it produces and the more food it produces and we're exactly the same the more growing that we do you'll find that the world diminishes more and more in your life um, we know that he must increase and we must decrease and uh that's what's happening all the time in this process even though we don't really maybe think of it in those terms that's what's meant to be happening that as we're growing uh we're not growing to make ourselves bigger or better we're growing to have a bigger and better relationship with him that he has more influence that we trust him more that we uh, are faithful more 
uh, in our walk um, uh, with the Lord. And so the gospel, even in these little verses here, is 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 likened to food. He's talking here about uh, uh, milk, uh, milk and meat. Now, you know, obviously he's not talking about uh, you know uh, half and half and a. Uh, a packet of sausages or anything he's not talking about that um, he's talking about um, the things that we are learning the things that we're uh, thinking about even uh, in our relationship with him and the word of God as we read it he's talking here about uh, the milk of the word which is uh, we might say the, the the basics of salvation perhaps we might use that uh, use that uh, term and so um, but then as we get uh, a little bit further on in the Lord, um, we, uh, we can stand uh, strong meat. Strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. And so as you're around a little bit longer, you can dig into the scriptures and find out amazing things about uh, prophecy and, uh, and, and numbers and peoples and nations and, and wars and all of these things we can find out and what they did and why they did them and what the lessons are, um, uh, are for us. And... You know, that it, it never means that, okay, I've, I've had milk in my diet, that's the end of that, now I'm on solid food and that's the end of that. It, it never means that in the law because we often go back and look at the basic scriptures, don't we? Acts chapter 2, you know, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19, uh, um, Jesus and the words that he, that he said. Um, all of those sorts of things, what we might consider to be the milk of the word, just because we've been around a long time doesn't mean that, oh, well, we don't need that anymore. Sometimes, maybe many times, um, we find that we've just got to get some milk in our diet to remind ourselves how good, how good it was, uh, the things that the Lord uh, did for us uh, in the beginning, um, to sharpen our sword when we're talking to uh, uh, new people and that sort of um, that sort of thing. Most of the time, I guess, we can handle solid food, but never think that, oh, well, I, I know it all now, so I never have to read the Gospels anymore. Uh, that'll never be true. Uh, always we want to be having some milk um, uh, in our diet, praise the Lord. Uh, Matthew 21, sort of jumping around a bit, but that's all right. <clears throat> Matthew 21, verse 18. Matthew 21, verse 18. Now in the morning, as he returned unto the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said to it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree uh, uh, withered away. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away and jesus answered and said to them truly i say unto you if you have faith and doubt not you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree but also if you shall to the mountain be removed and be thou cast in the sea it shall be done uh, and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer believing you shall uh you shall uh receive um in another uh, version of this in one of the other gospels it it says that uh, uh, the time of figs was not yet and so here's jesus coming to a fig tree and he didn't find any figs on it because it wasn't the time for figs to be on a tree so uh, here we are in the well, i guess sort of near to the middle of december um I mean, if you went outside and, and looked for fruit on a tree now and you went up to the tree and thought, my goodness, what's going on here? There's no fruit on that tree. People would look at you and say, well, of course there's no fruit on the tree. It's December. It's dark. It's cold. There's, there's not going to be um, uh, any fruit any fruit there. So what do we think? Jesus didn't realise this or didn't think it. No, it wasn't. Any, he, he knows all things. It's not as if this was a surprise to him. Uh, it wasn't like he wasn't aware of it. But there's lessons, there's lots of lessons. You can give a talk just on the, these few verses here. But one of the things is when Jesus comes looking for fruit, uh, make sure that there's fruit available. No matter what time of year it is, 
whether it's a good time or a bad time, uh, fig trees have their dormant times. We should never have our dormant time, no matter what, uh, because we're dwelling in the light. The light is always there for us. Um, the, the food is always there for us. Um, and so uh, we, we uh, can never be, uh, we can never be dormant. We've got to be demonstrating the fruits of what he's given us uh, uh, when he comes. And so, you know, we can't sort of pick and choose um, when do we want to display the fruit of the spirit in our life? When's a good time to do that? What's an acceptable, uh, an acceptable time? Jesus wasn't mad at the fig tree, uh, but he does expect uh, that the fruit will be there every day, 24 um, seven. That's the expect, that's the expectation that the Lord uh, has for us, you know. Um, they said in verse 20, uh, how soon is the fig tree withered away? He sort of said, no fruit grow on you. And a couple of days later, they come back and poor old fig trees uh, had it, you know. Um, well, we're going to wither away too, uh, spiritually speaking, uh, if the spirit's not active um, in our life, if we're not immersing ourselves uh, in the light. Uh, plants can't grow at all in in darkness if they're not if they're not doing the things that they uh, should be doing. Um, um, let's read verse um, twenty three. It says, and when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Um, who gave us this authority? Where did where did this come from? Well, hallelujah, uh, it's come straight from headquarters. The Lord has given us the authority to speak and say these uh, uh, these things because of His sacrifice through the Holy Spirit. We have that um, uh, authority. Um, if we're ready, all things. Uh, are possible all things are available what do you say there all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer believing you shall uh, receive um, and so every day we're we're growing in the things of the Lord because we're applying all of this stuff uh, in our uh, in our life um, let's see um, Galatians chapter 5. Just sort of pick out a verse or two. Um, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you're if you're living in the light, if you're dwelling in the light and want to, to be growing in that light and towards that light all the time, that's, that's what's going to take over your life. And uh, the things of the flesh, they will just pass away. They'll just sort of pass by you. You won't, you won't really think about them. Um, verse 19, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. These are things that flourish in darkness. These things like darkness because that's where they grow. They like to be there which is why the world likes to be there, because that's where all of these things, every single one of them, um, uh, is in its perfect environment for growth, is in darkness. Um, and such like, of the, of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is where light is. And so the things of darkness are not compatible at all with um, with the Lord. 
But verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. Against such there is no um, law. Trees and uh, plants, shrubs and flowers and things, what, what, are they, what are they doing? What's their aim? Well, their aim is to bear fruit. Flowers, seeds, maybe edible fruit on some, on some of them. Um, and it's one of their very main purposes, yes, to grow and yes, to uh, get bigger and more branches and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, one of their very main purposes of a tree or a flower is to bear some kind of fruit, be it a seed, be it something pretty to look at uh, or, whatever it, or, or whatever it might be. That's their purpose. It should be our purpose to be uh, displaying uh, the fruit of the Spirit in our life, all these things that I just read. That's what plants want to do. They, they want to flower. They want to make a display. What does the display do? It attracts, in their case, insects. What do we want to attract? Not, not particularly insects, mozzies and, and what have you. Um, but we want to attract people to the gospel. We want to attract people to the things of the light. Come out of the darkness, come over here to where the light is. And you'll start bearing your own fruit if you're obedient unto the things um, uh, of the Lord, you know. Their glory is perhaps you could say in their flower, in how great they in how great they look and the scent they give off and whatever it, it might be. Um, our glory is to display the uh, the great things that the Lord has done for us, to make them manifest, to make them uh, an open an open display, an open uh, an open show. You know. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to finish in First Corinthians chapter three. I had a couple of other things there, but I'll leave them for now. Getting on a bit. First Corinthians chapter three. And verse 6, so Paul is writing to the church at, um, at Corinth. He actually starts this chapter talking about, I fed you with milk and not with meat and all this sort of thing. Um, so um, maybe verse 4, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4, for, for while one says, I am a Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that gives the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labour. For we are labourers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's uh, uh, building. Then he goes on to talk about building upon a, a, a foundation, you know. God is the great uh, gardener. God is, um, you know, the one that's able to do all things, make all things grow perfectly, which we don't unfortunately do all the time. Um, but we're called to be gardeners, you know of ourselves and uh, of others. We, we need to do that. And so we plant, we water, we talk, we exhort, we shine, we do whatever it is that we, that we can do. Uh, flyers, uh, putting them indoors, giving them to people, uh, going on the internet, all of these things. Um, we do all of that stuff, but remember, God giveth the increase. We can talk and he wants us to do all of that, but it's God that does it. The relationship that we all have with the Lord is exactly that, a relationship with the Lord between us and him um, directly. Um, how often should we grow? Constantly. It was interesting, I thought, um, you may not, the protein that starts the growing process 
in plants is called constans. Constantly we should be growing. And that protein is called constans, that we're constantly doing it. Um, the amazing system that God has set up of all of this, how did it know it needed that protein? How did it know it needed that chemical substance to grow? How did it know all of this? Well, of course, it, it, it didn't. A lot of people look at all this and say, wow, what an amazing chance event that is. I mean, it's complete nonsense, isn't it? What kind of chance event could it possibly be? The more we look into the natural side of it, um, we can see how incredibly complex it is. And yet, so simple at the same time. Take some CO2, take some water, take some light. What do you get? Oxygen and food. That sounds very simple. You write that in a, in a, a chemical equation and it just takes one line on a page, you know. But the Lord did all of that. If he can do that, what else can he do? Everything he can do from that little simple thing. Um, why did he do it this way? Well, because he could and because he thought it was the best way, and so therefore it is the best way, but also to allow us perhaps to understand some spiritual truths about growing, about uh, uh, having food, um, about being in the light and going towards the light. So grow wisely. Take heed to what you do. But above all, grow towards the light. Get to the light. Because that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna grow. Because you're gonna convert worldly things, our earthly nature, um, into uh, things that God wants us to have, into into fruit of the spirit, um, using uh, the living water and the Holy Spirit, uh, those things. And we're gonna convert them ultimately to eternal life. All of that stuff is all aimed to one thing that we're gonna live forever with the Lord and all the people said. Amen. All right.